welcome to Mando Bug Crafts, episode 45. What's up, I'm Mando Bug. <laughs> you can call me Amanda if you want. I would like to take the time to welcome you new viewers, checking me out for the first time today, and also thank you for returning viewers for coming back. So, starting out the show with something I've learned. So, <laughs> I got an awesome amount of responses from you guys about my method that I, that I talked about last week with the cross stitch, um, and a lot of you guys were recommending this new method I'd never heard of. So, um, I think one of you referred to it as the loop method, but essentially you all explained or linked to the same method. So, um, pretty much what you do to start cross stitch with this method, say you're using two strands, you take one really long strand, you fold it in half, and then you thread those two ends through your needle, and then when you sew through your fabric, you catch that loop. It's kind of, it reminds me of the opposite of like when you do a chain stitch in embroidery, how you're kind of catching that loop. Um, but uh, instead of making a video, I'm just going to go ahead and insert the awesome picture that Julie shared in the Mandabug Crafts Ravelry group. So yeah, that picture pretty much sums up how it starts. And that's been my pretty much go-to method ever since that, ever since all of you shared that with me. So thank you guys so much. You're awesome. Um, the only time that I've noticed that I can't really use it is if I'm stitching with variegated threads. Because when you take the single strand and you put it in half, sometimes the, like, the color changes won't line up. So it's better just to do, to do the other method that I did earlier. Um, but I really do like this new method. Um, it's minimal, it, it saves thread, and it's, I don't know, it... I just like it a lot better so um, I'm gonna go ahead and link to a video that was also shared on the YouTube comments to my last video um, that was recommended for like a, a video tutorial of how to do that loop stitch to begin your project so thank you thank you thank you guys so much um, it's awesome when I can learn things from you guys because I'm not I'm not very experienced in a lot of the crafts that I do. That's why I have this something I've learned portion of the show because, you know, you can always be learning whether you're here or here or here or here. <laughs> uh, there's always room to grow. And even if you are at the top, you can create new things. And so it's, it's never, the, lear the learning process is never ending. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much again. Uh, moving on to works in progress. So. Slow and steady, slow and steady is going to win this shawl race for me, okay? <laughs> so this shawl is Princess and the Pea by Lily Go. And I'm knitting it out of German color smushy with cashmere in the humdrum colorway. And it is starting to get difficult. <laughs> I mean, not difficult, just um, there's some new stitches that I'd never done before in here. Uh, this pattern has a lot of twisted stitches in it, which give it great depth. And uh, it, it was, I mean, no wonder I love this pattern, but uh, it is not, it is not the easiest. So you can see the little yellow stitch marker. That's where I was. So this is the progress that I've made. Um, it's getting longer, you guys. It's getting there. And I'm down to 300 stitches on the needles. So I should just be able to continue to make progress. Um, but I'm, it's so gorgeous, so gorgeous. I can't wait till it's done and all blocked out and I can just wrap up in it. <laughs> so, uh, cause I am making it in the medium size. So, you know, I don't know if how many sizes there are. I think there's an extra small and a small and I'm making the medium. Let me see. Yes, there is. There's an extra small, small, medium, and large. So I'm making the second largest size. So it um, should be nice and warm for the coming climate changes, although I'm not really seeing it here in Georgia. Uh, kind of, but not really. We were on Tornado Watch yesterday, which, thank goodness, a tornado never happened. But um, it was still really hot outside. It just was windy and rainy, still in the 70s. 
So I'm hoping it, it starts to cool off here uh, soon. It, it, it tricks me because some days it'll start getting cold and then randomly the next day it's like 80 again. So come on, it's trying to turn. The leaves are turning and falling off trees, which, like, how do they know? How do they know that it's fall because the climate hasn't really changed that much? <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, that's all I got for works in progress. <laughs> so moving on to finished objects. I have been quite the busy bee this week working on the gifts for my friends baby's first birthday and I finished them. So the first thing I finished was Patch by Susan Claudino and oh my goodness you guys. <laughs> Look at how cute he is. Is he not the cutest little guy? So um, it's pro okay maybe if I hold him like this with the white background you can see uh, his arms and legs a little bit better. But uh, look at him, jiggly guy. <laughs> this is, I just want to keep it. I want to keep it, but I, I can't. I will make my own. They don't take very long to make. Um, I, literally, this is the cutest stuffed pattern I have seen to date. Susan Claudino is a genius, and she understands what I find aesthetically pleasing. So... <laughs> Uh, so here's the eye cord arms and legs that I showed you guys last week and then I just knit his little body and his little pumpkin head and a little stem and uh, embroidered the mouth on which I wasn't sure how happy I was with the mouth but I like it and then the eyes um, because this is for a one year old I decided to just use some felt eyes maybe if I get really close you can see my seams on there where I sewed it down just because I know this darling little girl likes to put everything in her mouth and the plastic safety eyes do have that washer that snaps in on the back but what if one day the beautiful baby girl gets ravenously crazy and just like is ripping kind of like a dog <laughs> ripping away at it and I I don't want to take any chances. So, nothing that can potentially cause choking um, that I know of, that I that I can think of. Um, I think these should be fine. Um, pretty sure she's not going to try to actually swallow the arms or legs and I don't think she could wrap it around her neck. So, hopefully, hopefully it's fine. If not, it might just have to be put up as a decoration. <laughs> but, so cute! So cute. Oh, and I mentioned last week that I was going to look up the, the jogless seam. Well, I looked it up and I tried it and I don't think I did a very good job. And I don't know if it was because it's not very many stitches on DPNs in the round and I was just having issues controlling it all or if it was because some of the rounds started with a decrease and when you do the jogless seam you pick up a stitch and then you knit it together with the stitch that's already on there so then it might create a funky stitch if that was also part of a decrease. I'm not really sure what happened. Here's my back. So not jogless, even though I tried. I, I tempted. So not really sure why, what, not really sure what happened, but it doesn't matter. It's still really cute. So I also finished the Pumpkin Pie gar Cardigan by Deborah Newton out of the Heirloom Baby Knits book. And, um, this, this little cardigan was interesting. So here it is in its glory. I, I think, at the end of the day, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I knit this out of some acrylic I got from Hobby Lobby, Baby B, in the Apricot Jam colorway. It's like a, I think, excuse me, I think it's a sport weight. Um, and then I got these little buttons from Joanne Fabrics, but uh, so, whoa, it sure did white balance to that orange, didn't it? <laughs> um, but anyways, so, the interesting thing about this dress is the way that it was constructed, um, there was a lot of seaming, a lot more seaming than I expected, because of course I didn't read the directions from the beginning to the end like I should have. Now. If I would have, 
I probably would have found a way to knit the sleeves in the round. They were knit flat, seamed together at the bottom, and then seamed onto the dress. So, um, a lot of seaming. And um, the other thing is the, um, the button band. You can see I got a button band there. Uh, the book was backwards, so um, when it, it showed the layout of the sweater, and when you look at it, the left is the left. So when I went to knit the left button band, I knit it compared to the chart, but then when I went to go knit the right button band, um, that's the one that had the button holes in it, and it was backwards. So my holes were down here. And it's just because it was backwards in the book. So when they said right, they meant left. When either the chart or the written directions were backwards, they didn't match. So I, I didn't read the button band directions with the buttonholes on it right the first time, so I knit too much and I had to rip it out. And then I was like, oh, whoops, okay, the buttonholes were supposed to go on this row. Messed that up. So then I redid it and found out the holes were at the bottom. So I had to rip it out again and then redo it. And because I tried to do it backwards from what it was, um, the buttonholes don't necessarily line up where they're supposed to. And the pattern's actually written to have another button, um, like here. But you can see how it tapered the dress is how it's, um, how it does. So, um, I'm fine with the buttons being where they are because that lets the bottom be able to flow and move around. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this fits. It, it looks, compared to the child, it looks like it's going to be a little big, but I'd rather have her be able to grow into it than not fit it at all. Um, so, Woohoo! Ready for Saturday! I met my deadlines! That almost never happens. I'm not going to jinx myself and try to meet more deadlines. I'm going to just be happy with the fact that I met the, the deadline. <laughs> um, so moving on to Check It Out. So for Check It Out this week, I wanted to talk about a blog um, that I stumbled upon a while ago, but I don't think I've shared it with you guys. Um, I do enjoy podcasting, <laughs> and I also enjoy watching podcasts. So, unfortunately, if you're an audio-only podcaster, I don't listen to you. Not because I don't like you, just because I'm a very visual person. I like to watch podcasts. So, um, but because I like podcasts, I ran into this website called knittingpodcasts.blogspot.com. And this is an awesome blog that has all of the podcasts, all of them. Like, like how I mentioned, I like to watch the video ones. They have video and audio ones. And there's tabs at the top where um, I think the home page is featured podcasts, but then there's also a tab for video podcasts, a tab for audio podcasts, and then a tab for inactive podcasts. So podcasters who are not recording anymore or probably haven't recorded in a while. I haven't really checked out the inactive podcasts, but all of the podcasts mentioned are linked back to their blog or wherever they host their video or audio. So um, the cool thing is when you go to the home page, it'll show you like this person uploaded a video two days ago and then it goes in order from most recent to less recent. So there will be people that you already watch on there, like I subscribe to um, knitting podcasts or crafting podcasts on YouTube, So, because I, I really like the being able to watch it on my TV, and also um, when you go to my subscriptions, it'll show you people you've subscribed to in order of their most recent videos and later. And you can even set it to email you when someone's uploaded a video. But uh, this blog, if you don't use uh, YouTube or iTunes, if you have some other sort of way, um, it is listed, um, which is really nice. So um, if you like podcasts and you're looking for a way to find new ones or just kind of surf through what's out there because there is a lot out there. There are a lot of podcasters, which is great because 
the, you know, as much time as you have to watch podcasts, you can find something to watch. And everyone has their own style, uh, which is which I really like. Uh, you know, sometimes you're in the mood for someone who's, you know, relaxed with their coffee and is more of a conversation. I'm not really that way. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a little more energetic and in your face. But you know, there's there's all different styles and it's it's nice. The more people that podcast, the more variety there is and the more you can get inspired. I really like podcasts for inspiration. It's a way to find out, you know, patterns you haven't seen before, yarn you haven't seen before. You get reviews on a lot of stuff, needles, yarn, designers, and um, I don't know, it's just great. I don't have to tell you that you're watching my podcast, so you already know how awesome podcasts can be, because I'm sure you don't just watch me. <laughs> that would that would be weird. <laughs> but uh, anyways, might as well move on to current events. So, currently I am hosting a Craft With Your Hands Fun Along, and you can find the details of that on the Ravelry board um, under... Mandabug Crafts group, and pretty much it runs from, when did it start? September to November. The, the beginning of September to the end of November. Sometime within that time frame, you just need to have finished a project with your hand spun. Project meaning any craft. Something. You made use of your hand spun. So, um, I've been making use of my hand spun. I, knit that uh, baby vertebrae last week out of some hand spun and this week I have been working quite a bit on this 2x2 two two ribbed hat. Last week when I showed it to you guys I had just cast on with some DPNs and it was not working for me. <laughs> the DPNs were light and cheap and a very... A, no. no. <laughs> they just weren't working for me. And so I found my other sock needles, which I forgot about because they were on a project, um, and I, so I stole them, and so I've got quite a bit of progress here. So this is the 2x2 two two ribbed hat, and I love how this yarn is knitting up. So this was a braid of Falkland from Nidian Color in her Sleepy Hollow colorway, and I spun it, I did a fractal spin on it. So I split the roving in half, spun like long color repeats straight, and then I sh shredded the other side and did very short color repeats, and then I two-plied them together. Um, that's why I decided to make a hat, because you know this would have made really cool looking socks, but it's a two-ply yarn and it probably wouldn't have held up so well as socks. Also, it's Falkland, so it is not, um, I don't know, it's, it's pretty, it is pretty soft. It is pretty comfortable. I just, I don't know about socks. I don't know how well it would wear as socks. But uh, this is what the uh, cake looks like. Uh, I really like the colors. It's interesting how much different it looks in the cake than it does knit up. Because in the cake you see like just a bunch of jumbled colors, you know, and they're like barber pulled, right? You can definitely tell the barber pulling. But when you knit it, you get these, <laughs> I like to call them dirty stripes. Because, let's see if I get really close, uh, you see the color changes, but within the color, there's flecks of other colors. So it's like a, it's like a dirty stripe. Uh, so I have decided that, you know, this was going to be for my husband, but now it's for both of us because it's awesome. And we want to have the brim folded up, so I still have a ways to go. Um, well, I guess not too much. Man, I still have quite a bit. Maybe I can make a hat for both of us out of this after all. We'll see, because I still have another cake. Um, I still have another cake, a whole one. So maybe we'll both get our own hat. But yeah, I got, a, I got a lot of progress on this um, during a VKN that I did with um, Kat from Kat's Corner. Um, I've only ever done one other VKN before, but they're really fun. <laughs> There's Kat and then Christy joined us, and it's nice meeting new people and getting to chat with people and have a virtual knit night when you can't have a local knit night. So, um, although I think I'm gonna, I think there's potential local knit nights in my future. 
not virtual. We will see. <laughs> but, um, and then I also plan to cast on with this hand spun too. This was actually spun on my trindle. So it's like the last spindle spun yarn that I did. Not that I have anything against spindles, but I really prefer my wheel because of the speed of production. I enjoy spinning, but I also enjoy finishing yarn as quickly as possible. So uh, I guess that kind of contradicts itself, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, that's going on. And then also, I'm participating in the Clouds Factory Halloween sampler, Wacky Witches and Stitches, and I think there's only one more clue that comes out next week. So I will not finish nearly on time, although I am stitching furiously. Um, I have completed the border, which is a good sized project, and then at the top I've got Halloween all done up with the eyeball that I told you guys about. And there's a little spider. Spider. And then there's like these little purple balls that have been added. And I'm missing some of them. Like, yeah, there should be balls there. See? Like that. So I just have to finish that. And then there's some long lines that run through. And then I can do the blocks. So I'm getting there. But, um... I do like to follow everyone's progress on Instagram, and it's just such a cute pattern. The newest block that came out was a bunch of disco dancing witches, and it's cute. So um, I am enjoying enjoying this project. Um, but other than that, that's all I got for you guys. I don't have any upcoming events, um, but. Uh, uh, Jamie mentioned that I didn't share my baby boat progress with you guys last week. Um, so I can show you guys where I'm at. Um, I just hit 29 weeks today. So I'm getting a little bigger. Um, let me back up. This doesn't really help, but uh, yeah. Getting there. Getting there. She's getting like really, really active. She uh, She's getting strong and she's kicking a lot. Like uh, the other day... <laughs> Uh, I drink a bunch of water, and um, I'm in a, a training class right now, and we get 10-minute breaks every hour. So I usually try to wait to go to the restroom during a break. Well, <laughs> drink a whole bunch of water during lunch, and then we, we started class, and like halfway into class, my bladder was full, and she was just doing all sorts of karate on it. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like the scariest game of my life. What if she kicks too hard? <laughs> Luckily, I made it uh, to the bathroom on time. But boy, that was scary, and I'm not going to be playing that game anymore. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, everything seems to be going really well. Um, I'm excited to be in the third trimester. Almost there. I can't wait to meet her just a couple more weeks, and I, I just feel like it's going to fly by so fast. So, um, yeah. That's all I got for you guys, so I hope to see you next week, and I hope you made something awesome. Bye!